Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the House of the Swarm Tournament. Currently, we have Axiom Ryong up one game against his teammate and team captain, Axiom Crank. And the second map will be Daybreak. Indeed, Daybreak. Uh, that The build we just saw would not work very well on Daybreak because the main bases just do not have that much surface area whatsoever to try and deal with that. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of curious to see exactly how Crank decides to play this out. I mean, we've seen him play late game before and he's pretty good at it he likes to try and force the late game as much as possible and I, I can't say that i blame him because even with all the changes in hard the swarm you still see charge lots being very good storm being very good colossus and archons still very good so uh kind of curious to see how he plays it out yep i'm interested oh he wants to know how to kill widowman i'm not gonna give him advice man it's he, he he already knows how to kill widow mines. He he did so so well in the previous game in killing widow mines. So he knows he doesn't need any advice on that. We have Axiom Ryong in the blue trunks playing Terran to the southwest of Daybreak here. And uh, up on the top right side, it's gonna be Mr. Crank. Now one thing I want to say, Total Biscuit, is the widow mine is such an interesting unit because it basically will one shot a unit, which puts it ahead in uh, in its unit efficiency. But then it doesn't it doesn't activate for quite some time, and also the widow mine costs two supply, which is something I think a lot of people forget. Which means there's a lot less Terran units. So really, I think all Crank is going to have to do is figure out how to deal with the widow mine because you can get a nice little advantage if you deal with it effectively. But uh, you know, even though he dealt with them good. He still ended up losing quite a few stalkers. So I definitely think that this is, with three Terrans in the tournament, it's kind of no surprise, but Widowmine playing a huge, huge role. I don't even know what's going on with this at the moment. <laughs> it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, communicating in some kind of strange moon language, but, you know, we'll take it, I guess. And the barracks for Ryan going to be going down. And I, I've made a rule for myself that when I'm casting, I try not to read chat because I get so distracted trying to understand what they're saying that uh, it, it just messes it all up. Although at least, at least when you're casting a game live, you can open up the uh, the chat there without it stopping the game. So, God, they said a lot. This actually isn't helping at all. Ah, uh, Crank points out he is the team sniper. He kind of is, but uh, he also is sniper. Uh, and he mentions that as we pointed out earlier, because Sniper is the guy that took him out of the GSL. <laughs> Hoping the smack talk continues here. And uh, right now we do see Crank not going to go for his second gas just yet. Pretty standard opener here so far. And we do have the command are going to be going down <laughs> for Young. What are they doing? Uh, uh, just, just general trolling, quite frankly. Squirtle versus Mia. As we know, that is the game that knocked Mia out of Code A. And, Watch uh -oh. that VOD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Crank, we all love you. And uh, I will say that I know for a fact Crank streams a lot. Do he the uh, do the other Axiom players stream as well? Not yet. Uh, they, I believe, it really comes down to them uh, as to whether or not they want to. Obviously, like you're not going to stream when you're going to play in the GSL because you just you reveal so much. But uh, Crank streams quite a bit. I believe Mia is planning on streaming as well. But I, I, I wouldn't expect too much streaming out of Ryung because obviously he's, he's Code S, so he is focusing on Code S. Yeah, can't can't blame him at all. Uh, the GSL, especially Code S, being the most prestigious tournament that there is. And uh, the commands are going to be wrapping up here. The bunker is done. Looks like that poor Zealot getting taken out here with, uh, as, as Crank would say, some good micro. So those yep. greens able to deal with that uh, easily. That was almost a non-threat there with that control. And the second gas is going to be going down right now for Crank. He's got his expansion up, uh, not quite running just yet. A couple probes there are told to uh, to mine minerals a little bit early. Although, yeah, I mean, basically what he's doing here is pretty standard. Kind of sending the three probes down there is a little silly. Stalker now making his way in. Dips in to try and get some information. Does see the expansion, so that's a little bit of nice scouting information for him. Pretty standard thus far. Ryung scouting just to see what he can find. Look for pylons, look for proxies. Nothing as of yet, though. And so far, you know, a fairly standard game from these guys, although Ryong with kind of the build order edge in terms of what he's able to construct, he did get his CC down a little bit quicker. And since we haven't seen any aggression come out of Crank, that does give a slight lead there, but not much. I mean, that's going to be caught up pretty quickly considering Chrono Boost. And a Starpot going down pretty quickly here as well. Interesting stuff. We could just be seeing maybe straight up Hellion Banshee here. We could be seeing a drop, and of course, we could just be seeing the infamous 1-1-1. 
Yeah, and I just want to say that uh, that SCV, it just got cleaned out there, but Ryang was able to catch a glimpse of everything. The only thing he didn't see was two of those gateways, which is a huge tell. He knows there's no tech. He knows there's no air. He really knows a lot about what Crank is going to do, and that's going to throw him way off of his game, because that's kind of the first Stalker's one and only job, really, usually, is to prevent that scouting. Looks like the Hellion's able to bait that Stalker in blasting through those shields and I, I just feel like this is kind of the derpy stalker he hasn't really done any of his jobs correctly and uh, it could play a huge role here moving forward in the early game well we're going to be seeing yet more aggression coming out raven being deployed here by ryung interesting maneuver and plenty of widow mines he's going to go for the third cc but ryung is going to see a pylon coming down and this may very well affect what he decides to build and as you said you know ryung didn't actually know he wasn't 100% sure as to how many gateways were going down, really. So he doesn't really know how much pressure... I... What? All right, okay. The, the mana, so nex does... mana Nexus is being deployed. This is Proxy Chrono Boost right here. And an all-century attack. Dude, it, no, no, Total Biscuit. Don't, uh, don't make fun of me. Oh, yes, this is I know what I it is. Yes, you're right. Our, uh, yeah, Proxy Proton yep. Overcharge. And it might actually be in range of that bunker. And this is one of those things where a lot of players don't actually know how to deal with this. And now that the Nexus is down, he can just keep warping in units. And that means he'll be able to protect this for quite some time. There goes a lot of units right now. He might actually need some more stalkers in this unit composition. But either way, a lot of sentries here. The next is about halfway done. He just has to make sure not to allow these Hellions to do too much damage. You can see the Chrono Boost going down on the Warp Gates. If those Hellions go unchecked, though, they're going to make this attack end very, very quickly. Yeah, he, he must, must warp in here. And, oh, I think he just did a warp in at the front. That was the worst thing that could have happened. He actually has no units to stop this from going down here. So this could be very, very damaging indeed with those Hellions. He's going to have to get an excellent surround. And, I mean, all credit to him. He actually, that is a pretty good start. But he is losing a lot of probes. And that was a bit of a mistake. But the question is, can he make this attack work? He is about to photon overcharge here, I would imagine. And there it is. The the proxy Nexus cannon has been put away. Don't lose the mothership. No, I don't want to lose the mothership core. I don't know he's going to go in. Ah! Oh, he did. He had enough energy there for two of those. Now, all of a sudden, this attack is looking just silly. You can see right there, Crank not happy about that and uh, is actually making probes at this Nexus to rally them all the way back to his base. Remember, oh, he does have his own natural here, but unfortunately, the Nexus is attacking the bunker and not the SMEs. But here he goes. He's got to try and break it and make it work. Is really good it force going fields. to, though? Uh, he has really good force fields. Don't get me wrong, then. He does still have supporting fire. He may be able to gut this natural, assuming he can actually get to it. There aren't all that many units on the field here for Ryung. He actually only has a tank, a raven, two hellions, and a viking here. So this very well might still work, even if it wasn't the best thing. Oh, wow, the entire line is going down. The natural has been utterly destroyed. And now he's making his way into the base. There are six widow mines somewhere. But I don't really know where they are, and it doesn't look like they're contributing to the, too much to this fight right now. And this is Crank slamming Ryung down with this particular maneuver. Worked out pretty damn well for him, honestly. And he's actually going for the win. Widowmine! Oh, Force Field blocks the Widowmines off. He can't get in. What a clutch maneuver there by Crank. And it, this looks like it might be a game ender here. Yeah, and you gotta remember that Protoss usually do not stand a chance versus Terran in the mid game, but Crank said, you know what? Proxy Nexus is the way to do it. I've actually seen players do this in uh, in the Protoss uh, PvP matchup as well. So I gotta say, I thought he may have uh, kind of blew his advantage by losing that Mothership Core, but he still managed to make it work. And you gotta remember the, the Mothership Core, when it does that Photon Overcharge, it does a surprising amount of damage. And that's exactly what we were witnessing right there. And even the army value overall for, uh, for Crank there was just vastly superior throughout the entire game. And uh, the supply efficiency, not very good for Ryung. So I definitely think he, he didn't know how to react. He might have been a little flustered there trying to figure that one out. I would agree. We're going to get back into game three because Ryung is ready to go. He's chosen Ohana and we'll be seeing that very shortly.